Hey guys, welcome back. This will be an update on my Learjet Flight Simulator. Hey guys, welcome back. Glad you could join me today. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Eric. This is my Learjet Flight Simulator. For those of you who follow my channel, you've maybe seen some updates on this, and if you go way back, there's some really shaky uh, build videos, but uh, they cover the build of this from the ground up. I started in about 2007, and this is my flight sim. We have it, uh, this is the first time I've fired it up in a while. It washes out on those main monitors, but we're just queued up on the ramp sitting in Cuba, queued up for a flight to Miami. And uh, I won't be recording the flight tonight. I'll try and do a, a better, a full flight for you in the near future. But I thought I'd just give you a quick update and give you a little tour around the cockpit. In the console area, this is where it deviates from anything scale. Uh, what I have is the SciTech uh, autopilot system, a space where I'm putting in a start panel. Actually, it'll go where the other SciTech panel is. Those are just used uh, because the, the FGC isn't installed yet, although I do have one for it. So, also in the console, we have some monitors. Let's see if I can get a shot of those. So on this monitor, I have the Ablesoft Electronic Flight Bag. It's an awesome program, guys. I really love it. Uh, it has a nice little kind of mini FGC for in flight and over here I finally have working my Rex weather avoidance system. This is what uh, Real Environment Extreme which injects and monitors my weather allows me to see everything. Uh, I do have some other things on this console PC. This is a standalone PC. Actually we can cover the PCs real quick in case you're interested. Up here on the main instrument panel these two displays and these two displays are on a single Xeon server down there and everything here is on another PC and then FSX Flight Simulator X up here is running on an i7 quad core running at 4.9 gig heavy overclock on it but it rocks out it does pretty good. Uh, I just have the SciTech throttle quadrant with some 3D printed handles I made. Yeah it's nothing scale. I don't have the real throttle quadrant although I'm thinking about getting one. One more panel there not interface. Lots of these panels still missing their caps. These panels still missing completely but uh, this is, there's all kinds of build videos I made on this. This is my pressurization panel run with an Arduino. It works perfectly. Just love it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Over here is the electrical panel. This is anti-ice lighting, the gear, and ox hydraulics and nose gear steering. All of this is fully interfaced. All these knobs, encoders, the MFDs, everything work. Uh, we can toggle through and look at the systems or the multifunction display. Up in the top, there's the EFIS panels. These are how you kind of control what we see on our primary flight displays, how you can switch between your nav modes. A lot of guys will be familiar with the EFIS panels uh, who get into the flight sim. Uh, DU reversion, so we can revert the display units and swap them if we want to fly from the other side. Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Works really, really well really really happy with it and uh, we'll maybe go over to the primary flight displays and show you a couple things. So I'm not going to be able to show this real good but this is our primary flight display with our altitude and our speed, uh, compass HSI, we can toggle that between modes, vertical speed indication, artificial horizon, and over here is the ICAST. This gives us all of the information about the plane, the engines, and anything important going on, any important messages we need to deal with. And we can toggle through and look at all the other systems on board as well. Works pretty good. Pretty happy with it. And uh, over next to it is the RMUs, the radio management units. And they are all fully interfaced, fully functional as well. That's how we control our radios, primary and secondary. Uh, as well as our nav radios, nav 1, nav 2. Uh, TCAS is also controlled from here, which shows up over here. So we can adjust the TCAS range. And it works pretty good. Pretty handy to see what you're about to crash into. Yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, 
all of our kind of dummy lights and our backup gauges up here and they're all fully functional as well so next video if you guys want i'll uh maybe get this thing up for a, a small flight show you from start to finish and start up we'll fire up the engines take it for a rip and uh yeah we'll do a do a quick hop really appreciate you guys watching if you enjoy videos like this please make sure that you hit the thumbs up button down below subscribe if you're not already a subscriber share this video it really really helps me guys when these videos get shared out really appreciate you guys watching and good luck with all your projects